Hey Capricorn, it's Empress Rose here. Welcome to your reading. These are general readings. So we take what works, we leave what doesn't, as with everything in life. And if you don't catch your storyline or wavelength on this reading, you check your other major placements. And I've also been posting um, pictures of the spread at the end, so you can check my work, read along, whatever you want to do with that, if that's what you want. You have that option now. All right. Since I don't show you guys the, the spread as we go. No. Nope. We got Butterfly Garden at the top there. Sometimes I take that, but I've been getting too many today. And my readings have been going ridiculously long. Personal readings were going like half an hour minimum. I don't know if it's me or Tarot, if Tarot just has a lot to say today, or if I'm just dozy and going slow. We can't do that either. So we'll, we'll take that last one that was on top. To the moon and back, very popular. Lots of people just dreaming about their futures, not really talking about it. But yeah, <laughs> I love this because it's like dreaming of her future, not really talking about it. And here we have uh, dreaming and um, dreaming of your future and not really talking about it. So it was a redundant card here. Oh my goodness, and Ed, literally everybody's gotten this card all week. Not literally, but very close to it. So we're going to start with this card, the most popular card of the week. This is a flower spirit card. This is, um, you have angels, you have guidance, you have a tender, tender doula helping you open up, helping your mind open up to a new reality. You're a little flower and you're cracking open and this brand new light that you've never seen before is piercing through and it's a little shocking and it's a little bright and it might be a little scary as you open up and start to start to open up your mind maybe and or open up some open up your heart open up something we're starting to bloom and it's a little bit scary and you have this little beautiful angel doula here holding you holding your hand holding you as you open up into this scary kind of new reality but i also have um my understanding is that when it, that this week especially getting this card means i have to talk a minute about um about our ancestors um, many of us have some real asshole ancestors and when people are like your ancestors are with you we're like no thank you i didn't <laughs> she's not very nice <laughs> like what is she doing with me make her go away she's gonna ruin my life from beyond the grave too now so um, or, you know, that, well, they never really loved me. Why would they be with me? But the thing is, when we die, we go back to source energy. We go back to, which is, that source energy is unconditional love. It's, it's love. It's pure, pure love. Nothing you can do or say or anything makes you unworthy or unable to be loved like that. It's pure, unconditional love. You are always loved. And we are here to be conduits of that love and to to show be channels of that love and to show other people that love. But we often, as humans, have barriers. We've had difficulties. You know, we have these formative years and we're not really in charge of them. So a lot of malformations can happen in those formative years. And then we pass those on and we don't understand unconditional love. We don't, we're not able to be channels of it because we ourselves um, and, and that is just part of being human and part of the journey here is, is that dealing with that, that love and not, you know, having all these barriers to being a channel for that love. So your ancestors had the same problem. The people that went before had the same problem as far as like, okay, I'm here to be, maybe they didn't even understand that, you know, I'm here to be a channel of unconditional love to show, you know, spirits love to others here. Um, but they had barriers and blockages. I'm, I'm seeing a light coming through that's supposed to be a beam, but our minds have all these barriers and blockages and learned behaviors and perceptions that um, fracture that beam and sometimes it never gets expressed. So, but the, when they pass on, they go back to um, this purifying, pure love. And so they, they if they're with you, that they, they're, they, it is with that unconditional love that you can't shake, that you can't outrun, that you can't be unworthy of, that there's nothing you can do to, to change that or, or shake that love. So this is pure love. This is pure loving spirit, spirit love. 
that is with you and helping you and and gently tenderly holding you as you as you um, grow and as you go through different different phases of your life and different experiences oftentimes the beginnings of which can be very frightening and, and weird so so you got the the card of the week and the message of the week um, here you are, you're listening, you're listening to what's, what's behind what's happening, what's underneath what's happening. So here's what's happening up here, this whole riot of, of life and things happening and, um, and birds and bees and clouds and sun and stingers and honey and, and pollen that makes us sneeze. And we've got some birds flying around up here. Are they predators? Are they eating the mice? We don't know. We've got some ants here. We've got this whole riot of life just going on up here. And you're doing a deep dive down beneath. What's beneath? What's behind the curtain of life? What's going on out here? This is a deep meditative state. This is for the purpose of resurrection. She's not dead. She's not going to stay down there forever. This is for the purpose of coming back up with new knowledge, new information from that you've gleaned from this. This is listening to, and this reminds me of root meditation. If you've ever done, you know, I'm sure you've heard of root meditation where the roots come out from your feet and they ground you and they go into the earth and it's this very like gentle process it's i want to say it's consensual with the earth because you're you want to move you want to your your roots want to go down and they're going around rocks and they're going around things that don't that aren't ready to be pierced and to to go through you're finding the path of least resistance down into that grounding and down into understanding and 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 then you grow from that your top part gets to grow up when you when you um when you get the nurturing that you need from this deep listening to the earth to your ancestors to the to um to your intuition to what's going on behind it you grow you can grow up and then and then it actually feeds the roots to keep growing down and and um it's this this, this life it's the beautiful cycles of life so um and then we have these two cards which seem to be going together um she's thinking about this is to the moon and back and this is my home is my castle so this is having something on your mind and wanting to share it and that's what's funny because this card was the one that came out and i was going to put it back but then i was like no i probably shouldn't but it's almost the same message this though your intuition is telling you you're not quite ready to go yet you've got some messages of the heart uh, one that you'd like to share, one that you're holding in reserve for later. Um, and you're dreaming, maybe a little worried about the future, but your intuition doesn't have you moving yet. Right now, you you have a pretty far-reaching dream. You might be seeing pretty far into the future of what you want, of what's out there. And here you have my home is my castle. Here's this whole dream you've built up, this whole uh, future, this whole image it's very of a solid future safety there's just a lot of safety here a lot of security here and here you want to bring that you want to communicate that you want to give that to the world and bring that out to the world and this is a similar thing this is about you know building something this is these both have this really strong grounded energy which doesn't surprise me with a capricorn being an earth sign here but this grounded i mean here we have stones here we have actual earth um this really grounded energy but it's grounded somehow in your imagination in your mind in your thoughts um this is both very thoughtful energy here and then here this is for resurrection to come bring it as we've already stated come bring it back out into the world this grounded thing this grounded energy that you've this this message maybe that you've heard and you're bringing it into the world and and this here's this 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 tower that you've developed in your mind and here you're bringing that out into the world so you're really grounding um you're grounding you're listening you're imagining and developing a vision here for the purpose of offering it to the world and two of these cards have you still in the visioning process and one of these cards has you finally ready to bring it out and to offer it so there's there's a uh, maybe maybe with the you know time period ahead you've got a little more thinking and grounding to do but it's with the purpose of eventually bringing a real offer here and i don't know why i'm doing this but we got another grounded card here this is really funny to me 
This guy is very grounded, very slow moving. It's the Knight of Pentacles, all the work. He's looking at all the work. He kind of looks a bit to the past and looks about everything, all the work that's gone on to prepare this and to prepare this field for planting. And he's all about the work and his pentacles are based solely on work. This is a farmer vibe. Look at that. He's got this, all this work that he's done, all of it. Um, and he's really looking forward. Well, he's actually looking at the past. You've got two looking at the future here, um, and he's looking at the past though, and looking at all the work that's already been done, and it's field work somehow, and this mixed with that. There's some sort of work with the dirt, work with grounding, uh, grounding work here that he's he's been a part of. And so he knows that he's earned his pentacles um, because his, he's so focused on work and on the work that he's done that he's when he gets his pentacles, he's like, mm-hmm. There's no, there's no sense of self-doubt. There's no sense of, I don't deserve this. There's no, no, because he, he knows exactly what he's all done to get there. So here's your past, your present. Oh my gosh, this is really funny. I've had them upside down and I was turning them over. So we were just seeing the backs of them. I wonder what that's about. Here's your past, your present, your inner landscape. What's at issue? Your environment, your to-do list and your possible outcome. And since we already... We've got the King of Wands here. Was that the guy at the bottom? What's, uh, I don't know anymore. We've got the King of Wands at the bottom. I don't usually do that, but King of Wands, inspired, uh, charismatic person, patience, fortitude here. A lot of patience, but also a lot of moving forward. We've got the Salamander there as a resurrection vibe, um, which we've already got in this Listen card as well, resurrection vibe. And then with all this dirt, it almost looks like you're literally resurrecting from the ground. Um, so in your past, you have this, uh, King of Swords. So the, these Kings, this King of Wands and this King of Swords, Kings have the whole community in mind, everybody in the relationship, um, everybody in the job, everybody they're they're looking out for the good of all of their subjects or their a good King is. And since these are upright, then they're good Kings. Um, you know, they've got their issues, but overall we're looking at a pretty solid energy, pretty good energy. He's very balanced. He can see both sides to the story. He's bringing in truth. That's very balanced, very understanding. This is um, highly intellectual, very smart, clear-minded, very focused, very focused on the distant future here, um, which we're seeing here too, a focus on the distant future. Um, and that's in your past. This is really interesting because Sagittarius just had similar reading with the past and future. I think it was Sagittarius. Anyway, with the past and future just really coming in and out, really being the, the is it the wharf and what? really being, you know, part of the fabric of life is this past and future. So in your recent past, we have this far seeing future visionary king of intellect and, and very fair and able to take in everybody's points of view and everybody's truths and everybody's ideas and balance everything out. He sees the truth though, and he sees, he sees a balanced truth. In your current situation, we have Ace of Wands. We have this inspired new beginning. I love all this dirt, all this grounded energy we have here with this Ace of Wands because it looks like you've got something real to plant this dream into. So this dream, this vision, this um, idea coming in divinely guided, it's, it's, it's the beginning. It's a very new beginning of, of some sort of journey some sort of growth um it could be creative could be sexual could be um yeah a creative idea or just some sort of intuitive vibe here or intuition uh, an intuitive journey you're going on very inspired new beginning in your present situation um in your inner landscape whoo oh my gosh you're having a tower moment which i find very interesting and I've never really thought of these cards together before like this this tower moment look at all those towers she has look at all the lightning hitting this tower hmm fascinating 
So we have this lightning coming in, all of these epiphanies, just one after another, this understanding, this revealing, revelations coming in. This is all in, happening in your internal landscape. So you may be, so this is also your hopes and fears. So you may be having a lot of revelations coming into you and understanding you, revealing things to you. This isn't just like, the um, Ace of Swords, the Epiphany, this is like 200 Epiphanies. It's, it's big energy. This tower is really big energy. So you could be hoping for a tower moment, hoping for something sudden to come in and to, to shake things up. You could be afraid, which is mostly how we humans view these moments is with fear. Even though they're just Legos, like life is just, um, I don't know if I'm saying, there's, there, you've made a Lego tower, right? The tower is you made Legos and something comes in, smashes it to smithereens and you're like, oh my gosh, my tower. And then if you're little and you're one of those mind flexible little kids, you're like, oh, my tower, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Okay, well, I want to make a boat now. And then you just put it back together. So these tower moments come in to take apart what's been, what's no longer uh, what, what we're no longer enjoying, what's no longer necessary, what's no longer useful, what's no longer meant to be, and takes it apart so something new can get rebuilt. Something new. So you might be worried about a tower moment, worried about some sort of crisis coming in. You might be hopeful that some sort of something's going to come in to break up some of this energy. You might be wanting a tower moment. You might be thinking about your tower moment. You might be thinking of offering a tower moment to somebody else. Because you've got this whole wealth of towers back here. And you might be wanting to offer a tower moment, a realization, a revelation. But you understand that it's pretty traumatic for people um, when you bring that in. And so it's, it's part of your hopes, your fears, your inner landscape. Revealing something, it reveals a truth. Um, and so that's really on your mind uh, somehow. You're really thinking a lot about the different angles of that, being that for somebody else, experiencing that yourself. Um, it does look like you're, I mean, how much more literal can we get here? You're offering a tower to somebody else and you might want to offer sort of a, a shocking tower to somebody else. Um, but it is shocking. I mean, look, at it. you can't get more shocked than this. It's pretty surprising, usually the tower moments. And I don't want to make it too big. Like not everybody like a tower moment can be, I don't know, it is major arcana, but at the same, and I tend to be a little over dramatic. So I can over dramatic these cards. Like they're already pretty, um, we're already dealing with archetypes and, and big ideas and big themes that grab our attention. And then, and then your readers a little bit like, um, you know, can be a little dramatic too. So maybe it's not so big. When I go really big, maybe it is big, but it could also be just another week in life and here's some things that are going to happen for you. So I don't know. I don't want to like put myself down and be like, oh, I might not know. But also like I do know, like these tarot, we're dealing with big themes all the time here and not everybody's having big themes in their life here. But then I guess if it doesn't resonate with you, I'm getting all up in my head, we're getting in the weeds here. So here we have the Queen of Cups. So something that's an issue here is this offering of love and communication that you were expecting and you were wanting maybe, and it's not coming in. There's not an offering, there's not a full cup here, there's not a love offering, um, and that's creating an issue. There's like a blockage in some sort of flow of communication or love or something like that. There's some sort of blockage of possibly even intuition coming into play here. Um, oh, seahorses, I never saw the seahorses. I love seahorses. Uh, so you have this, um, I named, I named my campfire girls troop seahorses when I was seven. So it was, it's very exciting to me. I always think about like intuition and, and not intuition. Um, it's, um, when you start something, when you're the leader and I got to like name the group and everybody liked my name. It was very exciting. So anyway, that's why, and oh, seahorses are just cool. Um, too, but uh, that always remind me of that moment. It's very fun. So, Queen of Cups. I'm apparently very distracted. I 
on this reading. I don't quite understand what's going on, but I keep going on these little rabbit trails here and there. I hope it's not too um, distracting for you. So here's Queen of Cups, but she's upside down. So there's not been an emotional connection. There's not been um, some sort of love offering or communication, and it's creating an issue um, that maybe a withholding of love. Maybe somebody here is withholding love, which is awful. I can't imagine withholding love. It's very difficult for me to imagine that because the nature of it just seems to be flowing and 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 it would be painful to me to withhold love i mean sometimes i have to i have to hold myself back a little bit but so there could be some withholding of love here some maybe even intentional withholding of love which is hard to see that it, it's love if you can withhold it but sometimes the situation calls for that but I, maybe but anyway, that's what's at issue is this, this withholding of love and or withholding of a communication or something like that that's creating an issue for you. Um, and here in your environment is this Four of Cups. So this can be just not being interested in something. Here's this cup being offered. You're already drunk on these three cups and you've already passed out and you don't want, but this isn't you. This is somebody in your environment. They're just not interested in some sort of offering what you're offering. You might be offering something to somebody and they're just not interested. So this can be a side story going on because it's in your environment. And so it's just something like, oh, this is going on and th this is also going on and it might affect this. It might not be affecting that, but it's just talking about your environment. So this could be an offering that someone's not seeing, maybe even a divine offering that someone's just not accepting and not, maybe they're just not seeing it. They just don't see that the offer is there and they can't see it somehow. So this is something in your environment going on where something's being offered and it's not being acknowledged or seen or, or even, it might not even, they might not even know about because this guy's got his eyes closed. How can he even see the offering with his eyes closed, you know? So somebody can't even see that there's like a, an emotional, there's a, it's again a card of emotional unavailability. Like they're just not available to connect. They're not seeing it. They might have their plate full with a bunch of other stuff and they are just not willing to see it. Um, or they're just not even able to see it. Um, a, a, this offering coming in, um, this cup, because we have the queen of cups, you know, we have this withholding of love or this, um, this offering not coming in and then here we have an offering coming in but it's not being seen acknowledged or accepted um, and then in your to-do list we have the moon so this is dealing with your subconscious issues with your shadow self she's she's very happy up here but down here we have this roiling thing of, of fish and sea creatures that underneath right underneath everything there's a lot of subconscious work to be done um, and this is getting into your intuition getting into your subconscious this is this same card right here you go down going down into your subconscious what's going on down here what's going on beneath everything getting into that getting understanding that what is this castle like do you are you aware of this whole castle back here because she's not aware of it so this moon card is calling you to be more in dealing with your shadow self, dealing with your faults, your faults, dealing with your issues, dealing with the things that always come up, dealing with your subconscious desires and needs and, and, and figuring out what those are. I mean, she's, she's very pleasant up here, but down here we've kind of got a little like crazy little hellscape going on that she's just kind of sitting on. So it's a very intuitive card. It's not being able to see clearly, but part of that is because you need to go into deeper into the darkness of yourself and of your soul and deal with what's down there and the motivations down there. It might be a little scary, but you do have some guidance here, okay? So, um, and then possible outcome is this nine of pentacles. This is my widow Clicquot and my goodness, I keep not looking up how to say that, but I, I read her biography. It's very awesome. It's the champagne lady and she transformed the champagne. So this is, this is our entrepreneur card, our hard worker. It's usually, it's very actually deals with someone who does identify as female, um, most of these cards, like this king, this doesn't have to be a male. You know, this, this king and this knight here, they don't have to be male. They're just talking about an energy. Um, this card, to me, um, it does talk about a female energy, a female entrepreneur. Here she is. She's kind of halfway through. She spent 20 years cultivating her grapes. And it's time for a harvest. Well, she harvests these grapes, and now we've got a couple more years of aging things ahead of us. But here, this is this female entrepreneur. So it's some some sort of success um, 
long again we've got this this focus on all the work that's gone on before all of the the work that you've done in the past here focusing on long-term work and rewards from that long-term work this can actually be a business doing well or this can be you know relating to whatever else we're dealing with here but this is typically work farmer related um, and um, reaping some rewards of hard work that you've put into this so maybe what I'm getting here is if you're do you're doing this hard work on this um, shadow self and on this these inner demons and these issues that are popping up here um, and then you're gonna reap the rewards from that um, from dealing with that and they might actually end up having having real world rewards see because we're down here we're dealing with the subconscious stuff we're listening to our subconscious and then we're coming back up here to look at our real world rewards for that work that we've done and bringing it into the world and it might be that doing that work helps you be more successful in business and stuff like that because I mean a lot of us have like money issues and and wealth hang-ups and shit like that that we've got to be working with and dealing with so that could be part of what you're dealing with in the shadow darker darker parts here um and then it does end up having real world results so all right capricorn i hope that that was useful and helpful for you thank you so much for your likes subscribes and comments i do really appreciate them and um i hope you have a wonderful week